everybody, T.C. Bradley, host of God Made Millionaire TV, the hottest show on daytime television. I've been waiting all week for you, yes, you, to stop by and watch our show. And what a show we've got lined up for you today. Back on our show for a second time, we have best-selling author Peter Blount. Peter is an amazing business leader that God is raising up in this season to help break the generational curse of poverty over families. So, without any further ado, let's crack open the God Made Millionaire Bank Vault and let's activate some God-given dreams. Peter, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. What Good an meet. honor and a privilege to have you come back on the show. And I have to tell you, when you appeared on our episode, this topic about the blue clay, it was it's resonated and affected so many people in our audience. We kept getting our feedback about the blue clay. So what I want to do right from the jump okay. is I want to go back to your last appearance here on God Made Millionaire TV, and I want to play for the people at home that didn't get to see you talking about this blue clay. Blue clay came from uh, my knowledge of, of mining diamonds in South Africa. And the initial way to mine to the diamonds or the goal was to get to the yellow clay. If you reach the yellow clay, you were considered very successful. And of course, with it came the riches. And as I read further into it, I found out there were some people who continued to dig. Why? I think it has a lot to do with our lives. Uh, as we get to certain points in our lives, why stop? Continue to move forward in the Lord. But these other people kept digging. I guess they figured if there were diamonds there, there might be more underneath. Well, indeed it was. And they got to clay that was blue. And it multiplied tremendously over the number of diamonds in the yellow clay. And even though they thought they were rich with the yellow diamonds, they were wealthy immensely through generations with the blue clay. And I use that to basically say that in our faith that we don't need to have the faith where we stop. And it's the kind of fly-by-night faith where we're okay one minute and then we're bemoaning the second minute. We're losing hope, uh, we're depressed, that type of thing. But we are continuing to dig, meaning studying, praying, listening. We're continuing to do the work of the Lord. Peter, I love hearing that story about the blue clay, my brother. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, it really resonated, I think, with, with so many people. I myself got messages about it. Uh, one thing that happened that, that really stood out to me was I was flying back into uh, here in Atlanta and to the airport for a, a business meeting. I had on a shirt that had blue clay on it. And I was walking uh, through the airport and this gentleman stopped me. He pointed at me and he said, uh, uh, sir, uh, I know what that is. He says, uh, and I, I kind of looked at him and uh, he said, are you the person? And I really didn't know what he was he was talking about. It depends so, on what you're talking about. Someone yeah. that you don't know <laughs> says, are you that one? Are you the one? Yeah. Well, so it depends I, well, on who's asking. <laughs> yeah. Well, I looked down and, and, and I realized he was talking about Blue Clay. And he said, you know what? I, I saw that show. And um, he went on to say that, he, he, well, he thanked me. And he went on to say that it, it meant a lot to him and helped him to put things into perspective. So when I saw that actually uh, in, in motion and in, 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 in live time, I, it really kind of just I don't know, it touched my heart and resonated with me that something like that would be, you know, so uh, impactful that I myself could walk through an airport and not realize the impact that it had on some people. So that brought it home for me. It's pretty amazing the reach of our show and how many people it reaches. And I think, Peter, it's just a testament to 
the call of God that's on your life. Because on our show, it's important to me mm -hmm. that the people that come on our show, they have a prophetic mandate on their life to come and be yes. a part of our show. And I believe that God is raising you up as a voice yes. in this season that yes. we're in. Yes. But before I go deep on that, mm -hmm. you also had another experience with your son regarding <laughs> the prosperity dance that you did at the end of the show, of that show. You want to talk about uh, that? Well, I guess I will. <laughs> <laughs> now I that, guess you now, will. I guess I will. <laughs> now that I'm asked about that, I will talk about it. Uh, my, I was talking to my son when I when I, I got back home and, and uh, you know, asked him about the show and and uh, he saw the show, so I'm, I'm all excited and pumped that he saw the show. So I'm, I'm thinking he's going to give me a lot of, of feedback on the substance of the show. And, and uh, he did. He said, well, Dad, that was a great message, and I got a lot out of it. And he said, but I got this one question. What was that dance? <laughs> and I said, were you not paying attention? That was the prosperity dance. <laughs> he he goes, well, it, it started out as a little form of a salsa, but you went into a shuffle. I said, what it, was the, it was the prosperity shuffle then. I said, sometimes the Holy Spirit gets to you and, and, and you just have to do what your feet say you do. And that's what happened. And he, he just died laughing. But it's and, amazing. Uh, it, yeah, it is amazing how many people watch. Right. Tell good. us what you've been up to since you've been on the show. Obviously working on your dance moves. We'll see that at the end of the uh, show. Not much of that. Uh, <laughs> but tell me what God has been doing in your life and through your life. I'm. I know uh, you're excited to talk about some of these things that are happening that are pretty darn incredible. Yes, um, I, I got involved with an, with an IMO uh, because um, I really have a passion. I, I learned from my studying that there's a couple things that- What's uh, an IMO, just for the people uh, listening it, it, it's, at home? It's really, uh, the, to put it uh, clearly, it's an it's a insurance marketing organization. Okay. So basically an IMO brokers, uh, several insurance companies under one umbrella. So it's like an insurance market. Uh, many major insurance companies can be marketed under one IMO. What I've done and prayed about was I wanted to impact uh, people in a certain way. And with the COVID that going on and on the heels of that, this recession, and I often studied and uh, one of the things that, that helped me with this decision was I, I thought about who or what did I want to impact. And I wanted to impact people who were ba basically impoverished and almost enslaved in debt and not being able to see the light. I mean, you look at the gas prices and, and those things and they're just astronomical. You look at rents or mortgages, astronomical interest rates, astronomical, and it just goes on and on. So after that, I, prayed and, and through my devotions, there was a, another question. Well, if you do find out who or what you would like to affect, what will you do to impact that? And what is the manifestation once it's impacted? So I said, the best way that I could, you know, play a, a role in that is to find a fundamental financial principle that will help the people to become a little bit more hopeful and not worry so much and maybe open their eyes to, to giving and, 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 uh, and uh, in the future, uh, build a legacy, generational wealth. It's hard to build generational wealth when you are hoping for the things that, you know, a lot of times people take for granted. So in, in the infinite wisdom, that's when I was led to contact an IMO. Before you continue on, okay. here's the thing that I heard okay. in that. And I want to point out to the people listening at home the importance of this one critical component. This idea about the IMO, this was birthed out of prayer and devotion. Amen. Your time with God. I never thought that I would be involved in this capacity. But as I, like you said, continue to study and pray, the good Lord speaks to you in a, in a still small voice and right. moves you in the direction that he wants you to go. And only you know that. Right. And uh, it's between you and God. It's a personal thing, as we always say, just like your personal relationship. And when that still small voice speaks, 
it's up to us to obey. I just contacted, and next thing I know, I was on the phone with the president and, and vice president, and I was coming to Atlanta to Amazing. a function. Amazing. <laughs> but you got the divine revelation from God, and then you took the action. You didn't pray about it no. after you got the <laughs> revelation. No. You didn't no. pray about it. No, once, once I got the revelation, I went into action. And I, I, I believe I spoke about that a little bit on the last uh, show about, you know, prayer, supplication, studying. Right. And then acting. If you never act, you won't be made whole. We can see it all through the Bible. Uh, the action makes the person whole. If you touch the hem of the garment, you're made whole. So it, it's not that I know that I should touch it. It's the fact that I do it. And, and that's the whole mindset, I think, that you must have to uh, receive what God has for you. We're too busy. <laughs> in this current world that we live in, people are on mm. social media, mm. they're busy, mm -hmm. there's so much demand for our time. Yes. And if you don't get alone and find the time to get alone with your God, where he can download yes, yes, that yes. revelation, yes, that inspiration yes, in your yes. life. Because people are watching right now, Peter, to go, how can I find my purpose? How yeah. can I find that calling? Well, how about this? How about you get alone mm -hmm. with your God? Yes. <laughs> and get alone so he can speak to you. Yes. Am yes. I preaching your sermon? You're preaching my sermon. The, the revelations and the the things that have manifested for me personally in my life has been initiated when I was along. I mean, the last show I was on here, I talked about being at my father's grave praying and the still small voice uh, spoke, it's not over. And I wrote that as a chapter, which became part of a, a best-selling book. And I was not an author or couldn't write, I thought, but inspired by time alone with God and it's the same way as I think way back when I was a child getting ready to try to compete. I was satisfied competing locally, but the good Lord had a calling on me to compete at a higher level. And it all came one day, I was sitting in my room reading a scripture and uh, it was putting my heart to run, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I wanna play basketball, I wanna play football, and you gotta run. And that's what I did. So it's correct in the fact that you need to steal away. The Bible talks about a secret closet. And you really need to steal away and build your relationship with God because no one else can do that for you. And if you never have any communication or conversation with a person, it's impossible to build a relationship. You're a disciplined man. That I can tell you because you're very humble in what you're saying here, but you happen to be a world-class athlete. Didn't you just, uh, didn't they have a, an award that you recently received? They inducted me in, this time into the Space Coast Hall of Fame. The good Lord has blessed me. That's, that's my, I think, fourth Hall of Fame that I've been a part of. And you know the story, it comes from an athlete that wasn't recruited at all out of high school. So my career could have been over then uh, if I took the traditional route, but like I said, time alone just fed me that seed of hope that I just hold on to all the time. And we all have it. Uh, we just have to manifest it through prayer mm. and supplication. We, we have it. We, we were born here to do something. Peter, I want to pick back up on this story after okay. this short time out. Okay. We'll be back after this short time out with my mm. guest, one of our ambassadors, Peter Blunt. You know, JL, I believe that God is going to raise up a thousand God made millionaires at the least uh, through our God made millionaire movement with what we're doing, with our show, with our coaching services, with everything that we're doing at God made millionaire. But people need support along the way. So that's why we've created the God made millionaire inner circle. Right, the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle is where you get the opportunity to get coaching and training by myself and T.C. Bradley. I've been mentored by T.C. Bradley for over 16 years and I've seen, I saw the need for 
having a coach. For 16 years, there's, there's times where I procrastinated, there's times where I felt unmotivated and discouraged, and TC was there right by my side to give me the coaching and the mentoring that I needed to step up. And now it's your turn to get that same mentoring and coaching as well with the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle. You know, JL, that's the number one request we get is people want coaching, but they want affordable coaching. Right, and the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle will give them just that. And not only that, but the God Made Millionaire Inner Circle is very interactive. So it's not something where you just listen to us pontificate. You're actually gonna get in the trenches with us and we're gonna put you on the hot seat and be able to look at your business and coach you and mentor you through your purpose. J.O., what's pontificate mean? You use the big words. What does they that know mean? what it means. They can Google it. <laughs> hey, if you've been given a God-given dream, this is the place. If you're one of the thousand God-made millionaires that God is raising up in this season, you need to be a part of the God-made millionaire inner circle. Peter, I, you have such a heart for the college athlete. You have such a heart for the college athlete. Tell me how that was birthed. It was birthed through my experience in trying to earn a college scholarship. Uh, briefly, uh, I wasn't recruited and I ended up signing a, a full scholarship through the prayer, dedication, and, and the hard work that I, I knew I had to do. I uh, ended up becoming a captain at a major university, uh, held some school records at that university. I uh, went on uh, to sign a contract to run with Nike. If it wasn't for that platform, I wouldn't have had anything to aspire to do. Probably would have went ahead, went to school, got my degree, and, and ended up in, in, in a corporate world somewhere. But, but never the, the confidence, the discipline, uh, just everything that is instilled in you as a college student athlete. I often tell people it's the better way to go to college because you get the academic support. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're sick or you get hurt, you have all the doctors there. Just everything, the best food. <laughs> so, I mean, my heart is, is, is really set on that to give back to anyone who aspires to attend college in that manner. You know, that's what, you know, the other thing besides helping people uh, in the financial education and services and providing them with a vehicle to create generational wealth was something that I looked into with the college athlete to try to better their situation and the NIL came up. And I want you to take a moment and speak to that college athlete or that one that is aspiring to become a college athlete. The landscape, has the landscape changed <laughs> since you yes. were a college athlete? What would be your counsel to somebody that's entering into this, this uh, area, this territory for the first time? I think it's very important, number one, that you prepare yourself uh, academically. The first step is to be academically eligible. That's the first step. Uh, if you're not academically eligible, it doesn't matter uh, your talent. Uh, the second step. Say that again. <laughs> See, because you just <laughs> dropped that, yeah. and then you're like, okay, I want to go mm -hmm. on. Yeah. But, but speak about that, because yeah. talent can only take you so far. You know, that I think that's a misconception a lot with our youth. They see the end product on TV, social media, wherever. They only see the end product. They don't see the days, the nights, and all the things that went on prior to getting to the point of the end product. So I guess there's an assumption a lot of times with the youth, and I coached and I was in the educational system for almost 40 years. And I know for a fact, I mean, I started in the 80s and, and just finished up full time within the last four or five years. So I, I saw the 80s, the 90s, the 2010s, and, and even 20. I think when I, you look at that long line of, of youth, I think a lot of times they assume that by thinking it and not actually doing it, it would make a difference. And they don't realize that there's a process uh, that you must go through. And a lot of time they're looking so far at the end product that they're not taking care of the foundation of what they need to do. So that, that's the first thing I would uh, tell a student athlete is to become academically not only eligible, but make it a part of your lifestyle where you spend so many hours a day studying. Uh, have a schedule. It's the same as our devotion. Have a time that you pray, have a time that you study, and it becomes part of your lifestyle as opposed to saying, oh my God, I gotta go do that again. 
But if you have in your mind and in your heart, that's what you want and that's what you should be doing, then it's simple obedience. And the Bible tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. So if, if we obey something in our heart and mind, then we're gonna be more apt to do it. And, and, a, and a lifestyle, I think, dictates that. So second after that, I would say that they need to basically become aware of the landscape of, of college athletics. And that's where this name, image, and likeness has surfaced and has been like a shark in the last year. It's only been around a year, but it has changed the scope of college athletics incredibly. And the better thing that they can do now, they have camps, they have clinics, they have seven on seven. You have to be involved in those because that's where the college coaches are looking, but they're also looking at, at tape and film. And you have to make sure you upload those to the specific sites. Uh, they have so many of them out there. But um, I think you really have to have a great relationship with your high school coach and now with your club coach beyond the academics. And you have to be very visible to the college athlete. And each college has their own camps that they host. So if you want to go to a specific college, you would attend their camps. So that would be my recommendation to someone who's interested in becoming a student athlete. And you can never stop working uh, discipline wise and making it part of your lifestyle. And like I said on the last show, the biggest thing is uh, you had asked me what's the difference between an athlete and a world-class athlete. And I, I simply said that the world-class athlete, either him or herself has prayed and have been obedient spiritually or they had someone involved who was praying, who nurtured them and they obeyed them. So it's not necessarily that every world-class athlete is, is a Christian oriented person, but I guarantee you if you talk to them, and I know a lot of them, they've had somebody influential in their life that prayed for them, whether it's a coach, a parent, a grandmother, somebody prayed for them and they covered them and they will tell you my obedience is what got me to this level. And if it wasn't for that person who prayed for them, they would not be there. Interesting you just said that. My obedience is what got me here. It's God that obedience, Lord. it's that discipline mm. yeah. that opens these doors of opportunity. We all are able to accomplish great things, but where are those great things channeled? And I think that is the manifestation that we all have in our hearts and minds. A lot of people have great intentions. They have great ideas. They have great things to say. And at some point, they may be graced to have that opportunity. But where did it go? And I often say about decisions, like I said before, who or what will it affect? And once that happens, how will it impact? the people. I love it. I love it. You know, Peter, I, I want you to take a moment because you spoke about this at the top of the show. You talked about the pandemic that we have come through, <laughs> about the the hardships that people are going through. We have people all across the world that are going through economic trauma in their life and they've never faced this mm. in their lifetime. And and yet, in the midst of all of this, God is raising you up, giving you projects that excite you, that mm -hmm. are a part of a, your divine purpose, your assignment. And I want you now to take a moment and just speak that word of encouragement, of hope, of inspiration to over 200 nations in the 93 million homes that this show is honored to br uh, be broadcast into. Take your time, sir, and speak into that camera and give them your message of hope. My message of hope is one of never, ever giving up. And uh, I did allude to this the last show, but what I've since done is that there's a podcast I have called Walk in Power where weekly uh, I get on and just try to inspire people who may be feeling a sense of hopelessness. But what I've really uh, prayed about, and uh, a lot has happened since I was on that show last, 
in, in the area of, of finance and uh, it's just the entire situation that we seem to be in as a, as a world. And I really believe in that uh, there's a blessing and it might sound a little bit uh, conflicting, but what I think it is is for us to really uh, confide in someone or decide for yourself to start and build a relationship with Christ. And uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that if you've ignored it, you're probably right now a little bit low on hope. And your hope starts with, with Christ. Uh, uh, there's a song that says, my hope is, is, is built on righteousness and you know, it's not anything less. So it starts with that. From hope, uh, there's a manifestation of faith. And when you look at all of this, it's about pleasing God. And the Bible tells you without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in that, if we're pleasing God, that means we are in Him. And He takes care of all of our worries, all of our, our trials and tests, and we have no worry in Christ. So my advice would be for you to establish hope uh, through prayer, through talking with somebody who's spiritual, and just starting a simple conversation and devotion with God. With that, your faith will increase, and that's how we will please God, and that's how we will be in God, in Christ, and that old song said, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. It's time to hide yourself in Christ Jesus. And that is your way out. And you might say, well, that sounds kind of spiritual. That really doesn't give me anything right now. That gives you everything you need. You just only have to believe and exercise it. All those things that you're looking for, whether it's money, gas, food, rent, mortgage, will come after you hide yourself in the rock. And that is my advice to anyone that is void of hope right now. Peter Blunt, we're almost out of time. I want to thank you thank for you. coming back to the show. Will you agree to come back one more time? Yes, sir. I'll be back. You All right. <laughs> Peter Blunt, thank you so much thank for uh, coming on the show yet again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where we put on our shades and we do our prosperity dance. Peter, did you bring your shades? I have them here. All right, I'm going to give you the, the honors to tell Big Mike what time is it. Big Mike, hit my music. <laughs> <laughs>